Hey, Mark, when you're buying whiskey, does the brand's story really matter? Well, that's a great question, Dan. Hey, this is Mark Still. I'm here with Dan Cavallari. We've, uh, we've broken the streak. We had a great little world headquarters garage streak going, and we've broken that tonight just to... Uh... Well, hey, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> oh, where are you? <laughs> yeah, it's all me. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Dan's in the world headquarters. I'm in a satellite office uh, a little further away. Yeah, don't put uh, this on me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Never mind. Uh, so Dan's in the world headquarters. Yeah. It's still a good question, no matter where we are. Yeah. Does a brand story really matter? And mm. why do they make up such elaborate mm. stories when often they don't really own that history? They've appropriated right. that history. Right. Yeah. Um, I, before we get going, Mark, uh, let's let's start with what, what we're drinking. We got to figure out a better way to do that. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, am drinking what has to be one of the best thirty or sub thirty dollar bottles that you can get any day a week. The Evan Williams Vintage Single Barrel. Ooh, this one's from two thousand eleven. Every time I drink this whiskey, I can't believe I don't always drink this whiskey. Hmm. Uh, delicious. Um, I think the reason it sits now is because the proof is low. It's just mm. under 87 proof, but it's just, it's delicious. It's like yeah. everything, Evan Williams, it's delicious. Yeah. I, I need what help here. Well, because I, I only, I have two bottles out here with me that are actually open. At least and I was prepared and had whiskey poured. You're, right. you're well, vacillating. I, I've been sitting here staring at the cool, and it's a hard choice. So I've got, I've got some Eagle Rare that I've got, you know, maybe four ounces left of the bottle. And I've also got the George T. Stag open, which I haven't sipped on since we opened it. Uh, mm. That was almost, what, three weeks ago? So I need your help. A what long time I, ago. What should I pour? Choices, well, choices. I don't want to sit and watch you drink the Stag. <laughs> <laughs> That's no fun for me. <laughs> All right. And, and, and for the sake of, of Mark's, uh, you know, ego, and I'll, I'll drink the Eagle Rare. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, I'm doing it for you. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm drinking this other incredible whiskey for you. <laughs> <laughs> really taking one for the team here. <laughs> yeah. It's a rough life we live. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess, I guess that gets us right back to our topic, doesn't it? I it mean, does. There's two, yeah. there's two uh, crazy historical brands there. Evan Williams, mm -hmm. uh, part of Heaven Hill. Mm -hmm. An Eagle Rare, part of Buffalo Trace slash Sazerac or Sazerac yep. slash Buffalo Trace. So, those stories don't make any difference to me. Mm. I don't know. I don't really know the story of Eagle Rare. I don't either, except I only know that it's 10 years old and really good. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, that that's a brand uh, owned by Sazerac, I guess, sure. and um, has been a brand for decades and decades and decades. Um, whatever history it talks about, it that's its history. Mm -hmm. I think the question of the the brand stories really matter hits home with me when the brands materialize out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've gone back and bought a name. Mm -hmm. And now this group of people who have absolutely no connection to that story, right. Appropriate that story and expect to be paid for that story. Right. Well, and usually are getting paid for that. And story. usually are getting paid. And I think I think the recent example was you asked if I'd ever had chicken cock mm -hmm. whiskey, and I had not, and really didn't know anything about it. And so the next time I was in a store, I looked, and the first mm -hmm. thing I ran up on was uh, their rye whiskey. This mm -hmm. is a age stated at at least two years old, mm. uh, sourced whiskey, undisclosed source. Right. I think in Kentucky. I think the way the bottle phrased it made it sound like it was Kentucky, right, but didn't right. really. For sure, say it. It's a 90 proof, very young whiskey in a really cool bottle with a slick label, claiming all that history from back in the day when Chicken Cock was one of the biggest brands in whiskey. There's no connection there. Right. And it was priced at $75. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy. absurd. Yeah. But if you if you Google Chicken Cock whiskey and you see that history and you go, know, oh, I got to go have some of that. It's, not, it's barely two years old. Mm -hmm. $75. That's absurd. Yeah. No, no whiskey that young should ever be that expensive. That's, that's absurd. But it happens a lot. It does. It does. It happened. I mean, and, and I think, you know, I was, I was actually in a store today and, you know, I, I always kind of sniff around to see if there's any bookers, 
And I went to a place where I know they usually have bookers on the shelf. And uh, and they did not this time, but I got to talking to the guy that was in the whiskey aisle working. And, and, you know, he said to me, he said, you know, everybody's got the COVID crazies with whiskey right now. He's like stuff that he's, and, you know, he said between you and me, you know, stuff that I know is not good and would I would never recommend to people is flying off the shelves just because somebody somewhere on the internet told a story and said, you know, this about this one brand. And so, you know, that's to me sort of ties into it, right? There's, there's the brands pumping their own mystique. And then there's the fanboys, which I guess we are, you and me, you know, <laughs> helping perpetuate some of those stories. Um, and I, th I feel like, you know, we are, we're a little bit different because we do try to get to the actual taste of the whiskey and, you know, is it yeah. good? And I think that, you know, that ties into when we do the blind shelfy throwdowns, you know, and blind tasting, you know, that'll take you down a peg for sure. But yeah, I think, I think people buy into the story and, and it sort of perpetuates this ridiculous, you know, sort of, uh, mystique around a certain whiskey. I, you know, like if I found, if I bought a bottle for $75 and found out after the fact that it was a two-year-old whiskey, I'd be really mad. Wouldn't that bother you? Yeah. I'd be pissed. Yeah. Um, and what I want to do, and and this is a, a self-criticism, but what mm -hmm. I want to do is, is solely judge it on the liquid in the, in the bottle. So right. if I was to drink the two-year-old whiskey and enjoy it, well, that's fine. I have no mm -hmm. problem with that. The problem right. I have is that They've elevated the price based on a story that has nothing to do with the current mm -hmm. whiskey or ownership or anything, and they're charging a ridiculous amount of money for it. Right. And I, I do have a degree in economics, and yeah. something's worth what somebody will pay for it, so I guess it's right. worth that. Right. But I just I just, I just, hate that the uninitiated are taking that home mm -hmm. and thinking that's representative of, of whiskey yeah. and American whiskey and bourbon mm -hmm. and rye in general. Yeah. I, I can spell economics. Uh, that's about as far as my knowledge goes. <laughs> Spelling uh, and words are your thing. Yeah, Math and other stuff, yeah. uh, you, you seem not to care for too much. Not, not so much. I, I, are, word, I are word good. Uh, you are very word goody. I word good. And then, uh, then I math not so good. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm mediocre I, at all of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, you know, jack of no trades. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I uh, I for totally forgot what I was going to say. It was going to be a, a really mind blowing point. Uh, <laughs> I, I felt it. I'm sorry yeah. I interrupted it. No, no, it's okay. No, I think everybody sort of felt the vibe. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, so so we want to judge the whiskey. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know if if it's a reasonable price point, I'm more than willing to spend you know twenty five thirty dollars. I mean, even that's kind of pushing it for a two year old whiskey. But you know, I, I'm willing to try it at that price. Yeah. But at seventy five dollars, you're asking me to make a pretty big commitment to a bottle for and, for something with significant lack of transparency, right? right. Which I guess also brings us back to the point. I'm like, okay, so it's got a great history and a great story, but what if it's been crappy whiskey since 1784 or whatever? Yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> it's like Uncle yeah. Bill used to make this out of his bathtub, and it still tastes that way. You know, like, yeah. what, does this does the story even really matter? I mean. You know, Heaven Hill, I think at this point, the reason I like Heaven Hill products is because I have had enough of them that I know it is a reliably good product. I don't really so much care, you know, that old Jack from 1991 was sipping off. You know, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. Um, I just care that it yeah. tastes good. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's some brands where I think the story and the history it still doesn't affect the whiskey today, but at least there's a connection. You know, uh, Peerless yeah. is that way. Peerless got mm -hmm. their DSP number back because of a family connection. Uh, Kentucky Owl, I guess, was that way before it sold to Stoley Group. Uh, Dixon mm -hmm. Deadman's grandfather or great grandfather was in whiskey. Mm -hmm. But even then, there's no connection. The whiskey doesn't change. It doesn't have any relation to that. So I just, it's sure. just not. It shouldn't be a factor, right? It's a factor mm -hmm. in the fun and the enjoyment. The stories are right. fun. But you have to separate yourself, in my mind, from the economic decision of, is this whiskey worth something? Mm -hmm. um, and I do think it also brings us back, you know, recently we talked about young whiskey mm -hmm. and, and young whiskey from the standpoint of new distilleries or younger yeah. distilleries. Right. Um, we should be willing to pay for that to try. We should be willing to support that, even if often the experience is less than optimum. That's a, that's something where we should be willing to pay a little more to support that when those those brands have 
they're not claiming something they're not they're they're crafting something and doing the best they can to build a brand mm -hmm. that's something we should pay to but still you got to judge liquid in the bottle right and i think i think that puts a lot of of responsibility on the consumer you know it, it, it whiskey is interesting to me because in order we we've talked about this a lot you know you have to educate yourself before you go into the, the store and buy something because i mean if you know you can go in and just buy whatever and probably you know 50 50 chance you're probably gonna get something that's certainly drinkable and, and okay but if you really want to kind of get into this and understand what makes a good bottle there's a lot of pressure put on the consumer to sort through a lot of bs right yeah um, and you know when we talk about these stories, these stories are usually on the bottle themselves, right? And it's a marketing pitch for these companies. And what I have found is that there's always some sort of nugget of valuable information on that bottle, whether it's in support of buying it or in support of putting it back on the shelf. So in that sense, I do think the brand story matters. So if, if, a, if a company is spending all of their label talking about old uncle bill who used to do this and moved to you know west of nowhere kentucky and and it's all just the story but there's nothing about the actual liquid in the bottle <laughs> i mean that could red be red flag yeah it could be a red flag there's no age statement there's no it's source but source from where you know um you know and the no, no state of distillation right yeah um that to me you know so the in that sense the story can be valuable but you have to be very laser focused on what you're looking for uh, and what you can ignore of that story. Yeah. Um, and I think that's unfortunate because I do feel like that puts a lot of pressure on the consumer, you know, and there's a lot of ways to get kind of burned there. Yeah. And, you know, I guess ultimately if it, if it meets whatever expectation the uncertain or new consumer had, then I guess that, that works. And right. Um, but it is, like you said, it's, it's disappointing that, that's and boy, if you if a lot of stores, if you step back and look, there's a third of the shelf fits that description, and that's yeah. disappointing. Yeah. And we do talk, um, just because it's a gorilla in the industry about MGP, and I think part of this thing where I want to judge the liquid mm -hmm. is, is I want to do it in that angle too. You know, I don't want to just dismiss a brand because they've sourced from MGP, mm -hmm. so I do want to taste that whiskey, and I. I've hinted around this over and over again. I kind of just feel like I need to be honest. And I've never had an MGP bourbon that blew me away. Yeah. I've had some good ones. Mm -hmm. I have good ones all the time. Sure. But they just don't ever reach those highs or lows for me that, that it's the middle of the EQ. Mm -hmm. And frankly, I feel like it's kind of a, um, it's the emperor's new clothes kind of thing. There's a furor around it. There's, the MGP goodness crowd. And I, mm -hmm. it's not bad. Sure. Some of them are really good, but they, right. and I don't, I don't know what somebody like Aaron, the smoke wagon guy, I mean, that guy's yeah. talented. He's got experience. I, mm -hmm. I think he does great things, mm -hmm. but we've had a couple of the smoke wagons and they're really good, but they're mm -hmm. just not that blow me away thing that people are losing their mind over. And I, I kind of just feel like I want to be honest about that. Mm -hmm. But also need to be open because I think I've closed off a bit and I may be missing that chance to find the one that blows me away. Um, well, but, but how I much still you gonna, go back to the, yeah, the, how, there you go. I still go back to the money. Yeah. How much are you going to spend to find that one bottle? You know, well, based on the however many, I don't know how, I really don't <laughs> know how many bottles of MGP whiskey I bought, but based on yeah. them, I'm not going to spend that much. Yeah. I'm not going to stretch for that because I've spent, yeah. I haven't spent a ton for him. Probably 125 or so is probably the most I ever spent for an MGP mm -hmm. source whiskey. Mm -hmm. And and none of them, you know, not the hundred dollar old fangled nodder, mm -hmm. not this eighty five dollar recent uh, Copper Sky whiskey. It was really good, but it mm -hmm. just wasn't worth that in relation to other things. I know I can yeah. go buy and feel like, wow, that's really good. Right. Well, and I think a lot of those distilleries that are are really capitalizing on the MGP stuff is they would say, well, that's your opinion. And, <laughs> you know, there's clearly another person out there who's, you know, there, maybe their palate is different. And so in that sense, you know, it, it's frustrating in that one level because we've tasted so many different whiskeys and we've arrived at a conclusion. Whereas a lot of people who are probably listening to this are, are not 
through that journey yet. Um, right. And so they are relying on, you know, new experience uh, of, of, well, first of all, of understanding that a lot of the bottles they've probably sipped off of so far have been MGP and they Whether didn't they know do it or not. Right. Um, and so I think that's sort of eye opening in a way. Um, and I think it's important to understand that. And I've always told my friends who are just getting into whiskey, I mean, look at where it says it's distilled. And if it's in Indiana, then you're drinking MGP and they come back and they're just shocked at how many whiskeys they've had <laughs> that yeah. are not from Kentucky. And you know, they, they're shocked by that. Um, yeah, it's going to change a little bit. There's new distilleries open. There's new distilleries in yeah. Indiana. Yeah. But if a, if a distillery that opened a year ago is mm -hmm. selling a 12 year old whiskey, mm -hmm. they didn't make it. I mean, that's yeah. a mat that that's everybody can do that math. Yeah. Right. Um, well, so here's another question just based off of MGP. I mean, now there's a lot of distilleries cropping up like Michigan is a hot spot, and New York has a bunch now that are coming out. I mean, yeah. does your experience with, with MGP color your approach to these whiskeys as well and say, oh man, now, you know, I went through this whole Indiana thing and now I got to go through it again with Michigan or with New York? Um, you know, I don't think so because, um, you know, the thing with MGP source whiskey. And, and of course it's, there's not as much old age stock there as there was 10 years ago. So that's mm -hmm. a different piece. But the thing there is they've got a price sheet with just thousands of barrels on it and mm -hmm. businesses just start up and they go, give me 20 of those. And off you go to the races. Mm -hmm. These other distilleries that are popping up, the New York ones, I really want to, uh, especially the ones around the empire rye mm -hmm. designation. I really want to try those, but that to me, that's a different story. That's more the craft small distillery mm -hmm, mm -hmm. trying to build something different. I want to support that. I, th I think sure. something that parallels Indiana is what happens from Tullahoma, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. We happen to both like George Dickel whiskey. Right. I don't really, it's part of why I, I started thinking about this. I don't really care what labels on the bottle. If it came from Tullahoma, I want to give it a shot because I sure. like Dickel whiskey. It doesn't have to have a Dickel <laughs> label on it. Right. So right. if I feel that way about that, why wouldn't I be op more open to right. MGP, even if I know I've often been a little disappointed in the price to to taste ratio, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I want to be more open to it. But then there's something like it's still a, there still has to be a dollar value to it because now there's something like Sweeten's Cove, which is Peyton Manning and Andy Roddick and a bunch of other rich athletes. Right, right. Now they hired Marianne Eves, who was at um, oh man, now I've dropped the ball in that copper. Can't remember. Uh, she's an awesome blender. Mm -hmm. um, amazing, amazing talent. She did the blending. Um, I've had up to 17 year old whiskey from Dickel. Mm -hmm. I can't mm -hmm. imagine any way anybody can mix different barrels of Dickel produced whiskey to get me to pay $200 for it. Right. I love it. <laughs> I don't love it $200. Yeah. Um, sure, sure. It may, things change. Uh, but. I don't care what you do to it. I, I have a hard time giving you $200 for some Dickel whiskey, as right. much as I like it. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I also think uh, it's, a, it's, it's sort of worth noting, this is, this is not really on the topic of what you were just talking about, but um, MGP is, you know, Midwest Grain Products. Uh, they're in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, which is basically on the other side of the Ohio River from Kentucky. Um, so geography wise, it's still in that neighborhood, um, sure. you know? And so I wonder if, you know, we, we talk about Kentucky versus Tennessee versus, you know, Indiana, um, they're all sort of in the, the same neighborhood. And so, um, you know, even us trashing, not trashing, but kind of talking down about MGP, well, it's just another distillery in that same region of the world. Um, so again, that kind of goes back to the story, right? Like, does a Kentucky whiskey, I mean, just because it says Kentucky on the bottle, is it automatically going to be no. better than anything else, right? Nope, absolutely not. Right. And and oddly, if we're talking about legitimately earned histories, there's a lot of history in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. I mean, mm -hmm. that was the Seagram's Distillery uh, mm -hmm. forever. Um, before that, it was, I can't remember what it was, but I mean, that that place has history. And, and I would imagine when bourbon was in the doldrums, they were probably stocking up a bunch of barrels and- as the boom started to happen and you could easily go get 10 and 15 and 16 year old stock. I'm sure some of that was quite impressive, right. uh, but that's not the world we live in now. There's still right. some of that roaming around, but that's just not the world we live in. And I've had the 12 and 13 and 14 year old whiskey. And again, it's really good. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't 
good as the price was wanted. And it was some oddball, not transparent stories in there. And it just mm-hmm. bothers me. Yeah. But I, well, but that's kind of the point. I want to get to where I just judge the liquid mm-hmm. on both. Both. I don't want to pay too much for Dickel source whiskey just because I like Dickel. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to miss what might end up being the amazing experience from MGP mm-hmm. because I've got this attitude about it. Yeah. You know, I want to just go back to center and say, um, for what this whiskey th- says it is and the price it wants, that's something I want to try. And I want to mm-hmm. be open-minded about it when I do it. Yeah. I will say this. I will say that a lot of times I enjoy the stories, uh, you know, like they're fun, they're entertaining. And they, I think they do what they accomplish, what the distillers set out to do. They, they, they tell an entertaining story. And I think with a lot of them, I would be more willing to get sucked into that story and give it a try if the prices were not as crazy as they are. And I think that's what this really comes back to is in the last few years, we've just seen prices become just unreasonably high. And I think you know, I'm I, I'm willing to to deal with a little bit more of BS story just because it's fun and drinking bourbon should be fun, drinking whiskey should be fun, and I'm and I'm willing to get sucked into that. And when I have in the past, I mean, we've had whiskey nights where Mark has read the label and we're like, ooh, you know. <laughs> hey, I don't read the label. I did that before you got there. You, I told uh, the story. You told the story. You um, <laughs> extolled the virtues of. <laughs> But uh, my point is, you know, I think we, we want to be sucked in by those stories. It's part of the experience. But sure, at some point, you feel like you're being had. And yes. that's, that's where you got to draw the line. And usually that comes when, when you know, the, the, the dollar sign goes from one to two, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's, a, uh, it's a $3 sign when it should be a one. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I think to this point, that's, that's the moral of the story. We need to judge the liquid. There's nothing wrong with the stories. It's when those stories are used just with no basis to jack a price up. Mm-hmm. Um, and we got to judge the liquid in both things, you know, mm-hmm. not, not give extra credit because we happen to like where it comes from um, and not close off and not be open to the other pieces. Yeah. And from there, I think that's why in our particular idiom, where we're trying to help people find the good bottles you can have today. Would you call it's them? tough to stretch into idiom. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's one of, that's, it was that's a, a low hanging fruit joke. I had to say it. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's why we end up more often than not pointing back to larger distilleries like wild Turkey, like heaven Hill, mm-hmm. uh, like Buffalo trace, because they've lost their minds too in price. Not all of it, but some of it. Uh, but at least there's a consistent brand behind it. And the story that comes with Wild Turkey is true. You know, Jimmy Russell's been there for 80 billion years. Um, he made whiskey when there was no automation. Um, there's something to that. There's a familial uh, generational mm-hmm. thing going on. And though that and Jim Beam with the nose, that stuff's solid. I mean, that that story is entertaining and – it tells the story of generations teaching the next generations how to distill whiskey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and that, you know, it just makes it hard to tell somebody that says, I've got $30 or $40. I'd like to buy a new bottle of whiskey. It's hard to tell them to go try a local craft distiller. Mm-hmm. It's hard to tell them to go buy the whatever 400th bottle of Indiana rye it's a lot easier and comforting to say, buy a bottle of wild turkey 101. Yeah. I, and I agree. And it, it kind of, in a sense does pain me to agree because I think it echoes sort of the, the, the rallying cry of of every brick and mortar right now, which is shop local, shop local. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, to, to me saying go to wild turkey is kind of like saying go to target, you know? Um, but you know, you're going to get what you need. Um, and, you know, wild turkey is a lot better than target. Um, but the, some but, targets sell wild turkey, depending on the state you live. It's in. true. Um, but it, it does feel a little bit like siding with the big guys, you know? Um, and that, that's a little unfortunate and, and it's, it's a bummer that I think, you know, smaller distilleries have to compete in price and they have to compete in marketing and all that stuff and still get slayed by the wild turkeys and the gym beams, you know? 
Um, but it is in this sense, I think there is a, there is a, a big question of, of quality. I mean, some of these small guys are really good. Some of them are really not. And yeah. I think you're, you're just taking a bigger risk. Um, sometimes it's worth taking that risk. Sometimes know? it is. And, but, but I mean, at, at the point that somebody asked that question, what's a good place to start? Mm-hmm. I haven't had enough of those small whis- smaller whiskeys to tell somebody to go invest that money and spend an extra 30 or 40 percent. Right there, I don't want them to have a bad experience. They might have a great experience, right? But I just feel more confident that I can direct them to something that's going to help them into the to the market mm-hmm. um, at those bigger brands than I yeah. do otherwise. And I definitely don't want to send them to go buy a bottle of chicken cock because I yeah. those stories are just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, for two years old, oof, that's yeah. that's sad. That's that's really upsetting. I'm getting mad. I'm going to drink my whiskey. <laughs> drink your whiskey, Dan. Yeah. I've enjoyed my whiskey. Mm. That is a very good bottle of whiskey for what it costs. The the Evan, the Evan Williams you're talking about, right? Yeah, the vintage. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a single barrel. They don't age state it. They give it a vintage mm-hmm. like a wine. So this one yeah. was, they tell you when it came out. So this one, I think, was eight years old or so. Mm-hmm. Delicious. That's yummy. I like that. I like it my... Is. I'm I'm glad I went with Eagle Rare tonight. It's kind of hitting hitting the right notes, yeah. feeling it. And I got my oration glass, by the way. I'm orating. <laughs> You're always orating. <laughs> <laughs> Bloviating. I don't know. <laughs> it's more of those words you like so much. I do. I do. <laughs> yeah. Well. All right. I don't know that we helped anybody tonight, but it it, no. it did help me. Uh, I don't know. Hash it out. And yeah. I just felt, I felt like I was getting closed off. I felt like I was getting a little closed minded. Mm. Well, I mean, I still got a lot of open MGP bottles. So if you want to come over and sample some, you know where yeah. to find me. And look, I don't, I like drinking the whiskey. I just, I, mm-hmm. it becomes a, it's a price, mm-hmm. a price valuation kind of yeah. thing that just, it's just, the whiskey just can't be worth that. And if you yeah. like it and it is to you, that's great. That's the beauty of, of a thing like whiskey is that it's mm-hmm. it's just highly subjective. I mean, there mm-hmm. is no there is no objective best. There is no objective bad. Mm-hmm. Um, at least there hadn't been. Although I read a review of a non-alcoholic bourbon the other day that was just comical. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, per- perhaps there is an, an objective bad. In I that. think that might be it. <laughs> yeah, that might be it. Uh, I, I, it was it was so bad. I thought I've got to taste that. <laughs> just, <laughs> I've got to taste what this that, person thinks old wet cardboarded gym socks taste like. I've got oh to taste God. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. that that might be its own brilliant kind of marketing right there. Yeah. <laughs> so bad. It's well, it's still bad, but it's <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just bad. But again, I don't know if we helped anybody or not. But it did help me walk through it, and I do want to be more open. And uh, you know, maybe at some point we get good enough at this that somebody will send us some samples, and we don't have to keep buying eighty and hundred dollar bottles of whiskey <laughs> in hopes that they taste good. I am going broke with this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the enjoyment, Dan. It's mm-hmm. it's the expression of. I'm very much enjoying going going broke <laughs> for this podcast. <laughs> hey, look, the truth is, I'd be spending this much money on whiskey anyway. Absolutely, yes, absolutely, and we'd still be drinking and and say we would still be having this same conversation. We'd be having the without, exact same conversation yeah, uh, without in your garage most of the time. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't we're make just, any difference. We're just foisting it upon our audience now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, speaking of the audience, we'd love to know what you guys think. Are you one of those MGP goodness people that just buys everything there and thinks it's the best whiskey ever? And have you ever had a really good Brown Foreman product or a really good, uh, really good Four Roses or mm-hmm. anything like that? And of course, Four yeah. Roses sells their whiskey to people too. So mm-hmm. it's, it's an incestuous kind of thing. It really is it's weird, a- isn't it? It is. It's a crazy thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we'd love to know what you guys think. On the practicalstill.com, there's an ask button. You can hit that, ask us questions. We'll do our best to answer it. Um, and even right. if that means we have to go buy some whiskey and drink it to mm-hmm. answer the question, we're here for you. <laughs> we'll and we'll make that, that sacrifice. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, if you want to see us make funny faces when we open fresh bottles of whiskey, yeah. you can see that on YouTube. Just search mm-hmm. The Practical Still. We have every Tuesday and Friday, we're Releasing open the bottle videos and back to the bottle videos and even the blind shelfy throwdown. Yeah. Where Dan and I try and fool each other with blind tastings. And I still hold a very, 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 very slim and tenuous yes. lead of one point. Yes. 
in the contest that has no end. <laughs> we should also mention we have a new thing. Uh, the new thing is a newsletter. Yeah. Uh, that just started up. Uh, so you can, you can get that at thepracticalstill.substack.com, and uh, we will hit your email inbox uh, every so often with some fun uh, whiskey articles and photos and links to cool stuff and eventually maybe like some giveaways and contests and things like that. So go and uh, sign up for that. Giveaways like the open bottles, we don't want to find <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> those, give those away. <laughs> here's, here's a bottle of Eagle Rare with one ounce left in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, that's yeah. fun. Well, Dan, thanks for hashing that out and being my uh, my counselor on that. That's what I'm here for. And next time I'll have a couch for you to lay on and I'll, you know, I'll psychoanalyze you. Yeah. And I Dan poured myself, so I'm going to go now and finish boy. this other two ounces of whiskey that I poured four and a half ounces of when we started warm my heart you warm my heart <laughs> we're influencing each other yeah. awesome well uh dan anything else before we go i think that's it let's go drink some uh some whiskey here let's go eat some whiskey cheers cheers, cheers.